Hi, and welcome to today's episode of Piano TV. I am Alicia, your host, and today we are going to talk about 23 interesting facts about Frédéric Chopin. We've talked about Chopin a ton on this channel. We've done a history video on him. We've done my favorite music by Chopin. We've done some analysis of his pieces. But today I thought it would just be fun to share some short little interesting tidbits, what I find personally interesting anyway, about his life and his music. So let's get started. Like most famous composers, Chopin was a child prodigy. At the age of seven, he was already giving public concerts, and he had written several polonaises, which is a dance from his homeland of Poland. When he finished studying at the conservatory at the age of 19, his final report read, Chopin F, third year student, exceptional talent, musical genius. Frederick Chopin was heavily influenced by the music of Johann Sebastian Bach from the Baroque era, so much so that Chopin would travel with the well-tempered clavier, which is a famous composition by Bach, and Chopin would get his students to learn Bach's inventions and other compositions to develop their technique. Despite how much of a huge influence Bach was on Chopin's development, their music styles do sound very different. Aside from Bach, Chopin was hugely influenced by other classical composers such as Haydn, Mozart, Hummel, and Clementi. In fact, he taught from Clementi's method books for his students and used that as like a, a piano method. Aside from Bach, Chopin specifically singled out Mozart as being one of his top, most influential composers. For the most part, Chopin refrained from writing huge compositions. His contemporaries would be writing these sprawling works, sonatas and symphonies that would be 20 to 40 minutes long, but for the most part, Chopin only wrote a few sonatas and put most of his time and attention on making little miniatures, like short waltzes, which is actually a lot like pop music now. So if you turn on the radio, a pop piece of music might be four minutes long. A lot of Chopin's piano music is about three to five minutes long. Another difference with Chopin's music is that he wrote almost exclusively for the piano, where most of his peers were writing for a variety of other instruments. Chopin didn't write any symphonies or anything like that, for example, and that was one thing that really set him apart. One idea popularized in the movie called A Song to Remember is the idea that Chopin really liked to play piano in the dark, something that he apparently started in childhood so he could really like feel the inspiration. And it's thought that he would even want to perform in the dark, although I haven't been able to verify this. This might just be one of those urban legends. Is it urban? Chopin had a long-term lover who went by the pen name George Sand. That wasn't her real name. Uh, it was just her author name because people were more likely to read something that sounded like it was from a man. George Sand gave Chopin a slew of cutesy nicknames such as Chop Chop, My Little Grasshopper, and Monsieur Velvet Fingers. Chopin's piano composition, the Opus 64 Waltz, is nicknamed the Little Dog Waltz because apparently Chopin was inspired by George Sand, the little dog, who was running around in a circle and chasing its tail. George Sand was Chopin's most long-term life relationship, but it was a really rocky relationship, and eventually it ended when George Sand accused Chopin of being into her daughter which is kind of weird and probably untrue, but George Sand was a very interesting character. And they didn't always hit it off. Chopin, upon first meeting her, said, is she even a woman? She's just like, you know, smoking cigars and being all obnoxious. The next several points on this list are going to have to do with the relationship between Chopin and Liszt, who were musical contemporaries and probably best described as being frenemies. Liszt actually wrote the very first biography on Chopin's life and 27 years after the death of Chopin wrote that no one compared to him. He shines lonely, peerless in the firmament of art. Clearly the two of them had a lot of respect for each other and they performed together a handful of times as well, but it was a little bit of a love-hate relationship. Chopin expressed some jealousy about Liszt's talents and virtuosic abilities, and Liszt had his own issues with Chopin, which we'll get to in another point. Chopin dedicated his Opus 10 set of etudes to Liszt, and was kind of jealous when Liszt was playing them better than he could. Chopin wrote to a friend and fellow musician Hiller, I should like to rob him of the way he plays my studies. So Chopin was obviously really impressed with Liszt's piano skills, but became really annoyed with Liszt in 1843, because what Liszt did was perform one of Chopin's nocturnes, but he didn't just leave it at that. He added little frills and embellishments, his own creative spin on it, and that just made Chopin livid, because Chopin thought that 
it was good enough the way it was. It didn't need any meddling. And after this nocturne incident, they had kind of a rockier relationship after that point. <laughs> Aside from musical jealousy, Liszt and Chopin also had some romantic jealousies happening as well. Chopin dedicated his Opus 25 set of etudes to Marie d'Agoult, who was Liszt's lover. But Marie was pretty obsessed with Chopin, and Liszt was like, what are you doing, bro, dedicating your music to my woman? And aside from that, Liszt and George Sand, Chopin's lover, became close, and Chopin wasn't really cool with that either, so they were just doing some weird swapping. Chopin was almost immediately well-loved when he first moved to Paris as a young adult. But there were some critics who, in Chopin's own words, complained that he played too delicate for those accustomed to the piano bashing of local artists. <laughs> List. Mueller, who was a student of Chopin, wrote that with Chopin's teaching, he really encouraged his students to play in a legato and cantaboli style. Chopin was really, really concerned with students being able to play uh, to join two notes together properly. And a lot of people interpret Chopin's rhythm in a very flexible way, thinking that he did these wild retardandos and rubatos, when in reality, Chopin was a, a fan of the metronome. He used the metronome himself and with his students, and he really didn't like overly sentimental and dramatic retardandos and tempo bending. Chopin was born in Poland, but lived in France for most of his adult life. Chopin's mom was Polish and dad was French, which is one of the reasons that Chopin emigrated to France out of you know, other places because he was familiar with the language. However, Chopin never truly became comfortable with the French language. And even though he held a, a French green card, he always identified as being Polish at his core. A mazurka is a traditional Polish dance and Chopin single-handedly popularized the genre in Europe. The mazurka was virtually unknown at the time. And what he did is he transformed the mazurka from something you would just dance to, to something that could actually be listened to in concert halls. And the mazurkas he wrote are often very virtuosic and difficult. Chopin earned most of his income from patrons of the arts and from teaching piano lessons. He really disliked performing in public concerts and only performed approximately 30 times in his entire life. About public concerts, Chopin had this to say, concerts are never real music. You have to give up the idea of hearing in them all of the most beautiful things in art. Instead, he would just prefer to perform at a friend's house or in a salon. Frederick Chopin was basically frail and ill throughout most of his life, maybe even to the points of exaggeration. Hector Berlioz said, Chopin has been dying all of his life. When his friend Charles Halley visited Chopin and found him hardly able to move, he was surprised to see Chopin basically transform at the piano to go, he went from basically being completely crippled and hunched over to basically coming to life as he played. And George Sand often commented about how Chopin, his illness was probably more in his head than in reality. Of course, Chopin's illness couldn't have been all in his head because he died at the age of 39, probably, almost definitely, of tuberculosis. His very last words were, mother, my poor mother. One of Chopin's dying wishes was to have his heart removed from his body and transported back to his homeland of Poland, which is a task that he entrusted to his sister. And she did accomplish that task. She transported the heart, which was basically preserved in alcohol, and it is now sitting in a pillar of the Holy Cross Church. One of the reasons he probably wanted his heart removed is because Chopin had a terrible fear of being buried alive. Another one of Chopin's dying wishes was that all of his music that he had never published be destroyed. But of course, his mother, sisters, and publisher ignored that completely, and Chopin has about 12, sorry, about uh, a few dozen compositions that have been published that he did not publish before he died. And these include a variety of waltzes and polonaise and other works that are quite popular. Another virtuosic performer at the time, Charles Alkin, was a really big fan and friend of Chopin's, and Chopin's death hit Alkin really hard. Chopin and Alkin were close enough that Chopin trusted Alkin with his unfinished notes for a piano method in the hopes that Alkin would eventually finish it. Not sure if he did. And lastly, Chopin's influence on the wider musical world was broad and he influenced a wide variety of composers after the fact. Maybe most notably Claude Debussy, who was a very famous 20th century composer. 
Debussy dedicated his piano etudes to Chopin. He studied Chopin's music in school, and he even edited Chopin's music for publication. And there you have it, 23 interesting tidbits about Chopin, things that I thought were interesting anyway. I hope you enjoyed this video and please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I really appreciate that. And I will catch you in the next video. Be sure to also check out the social sites and links at the end of this video and check out some of our other Chopin videos if you want to learn more about this really interesting and awesome composer. See you later. And Liszt was able to play them better than Chopin thought that he could play. And even edited some of the, uh, some of Chopin, and even edited, ugh.